Let's talk. Hi, I'm Lisa Todd. Welcome to this week's End Formants. E-N-D period F-O-R-M-A-N-T-S. You can find us on Facebook. This week we're going to talk about the Boy Scouts and their deliberation over letting gays in the Scouts. We're going to talk about how old is too old to be a dad. And should people in the rears get their tax refund taken from them and given to their spouses? All on this week's End Formants. It's our world. Let's talk about it. Oh, we wanted to talk this week on the show about the deliberation that's going on with the Boy Scouts about them letting gays in the in the Boy Scouts. Uh, Paula, what do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, I just think the Boy Scouts are behind the times, um, you know, puritanical. Like, I mean, in the UK, Boy Scouts don't aren't banned. Gay Boy Scouts aren't banned. It just, it's like you know these good Christian churches that, you know, speak against gays, you know, they're, it's, they're hypocrites, simply hypocrites. They're going against everything Jesus taught and who Jesus was. So now that it's hitting the Boy Scouts in the pocket, they're coming around. Well, here's the thing. Why isn't that discrimination? That is discrimination. It is. Of course it's discrimination. And we are protected by that. Just like the people with the guns are protected to have their guns. Well, but Lisa, because gays are not uh, considered a protected class federally yet. Well, but here's the thing. You know, there were people that had said, had brought up that Chick-fil-A thing, and they were comparing the two, and I explained that, you know, he wasn't discriminating. You know, the guy that owns Chick-fil-A wasn't discriminating, but in fact the Boy Scouts were, were definitely discriminating. Exactly. Yeah. And what about if they get a gay chicken? I mean, if, if Chick-fil-A cooks a gay chicken, there might be a real problem with that. Well, I think that Chick-fil-A has uh, changed their tune about a few things, actually. And, um, you know, they're they're not so anti-gay so publicly, let's just say that. But well, it's because, of course, because it, 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 it hurts their business. So, you know, they are going to change their tune because they don't want all gay people to stop going. Well, I don't know that I would stop going. I think that he has the right. He's a private-owned company. I never stopped going. As a matter of fact, while my my lesbian friends were having a, a kiss in, I was I was going to go in for a, a chick, chicken sandwich. I was hungry that day. There you go. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm not going to start. If you know, I'll tell you something. If we wanted to boycott every business, if you looked, if you peel the onion layer back, that's right. You'd find plenty. You'd find skeletons in every business's closet. You know, so when people condemn, you know, I love my friends that get on the bandwagon about, you know, businesses and, you know, organizations. Uh, you can end up boycotting everybody. Exactly. Including yourself. Well, yeah. not myself, not myself. But Julie, Julie, um, is it true? I mean, do, do they have Boy Scouts in the UK? Yes, we do. And we have Girl Guide, not Girl Scouts. But uh, it's probably exactly the same thing. And as far as I'm aware, it's completely illegal to discriminate against somebody because they're gay. However, it is perfectly fine to discriminate for the Church of England to discriminate against women for having a vagina and ovaries, as we do. Um, they're not allowing them to become bishops. Although the head of the Church of England is the Queen, and as far as I'm aware, she is actually a woman, unless something has gone horrible. She's wrong. got more balls than any guy I know. She's got ovaries of steel. So, <laughs> ovaries so of I steel. don't understand, and of course, it should be completely illegal to discriminate against anybody, including gay people, of course, or anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't understand why certain religious or sex or whatever are allowed to discriminate against women. It doesn't make any sense. They should they should be forced well actually I'm 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 quite okay with them exposing themselves as misogynists because hopefully they'll fade away and people will just do their own thing and understand that all they need to know is to be kind to other people and try to be as happy as you can yourself without you don't need all that dog mask then, you know, and just have a, a nice community sense and help each other. Um, and then you don't need to have all those 
determination and you said to me and hey, we'll get along with each other. Um you know, I, I, I'm a Christian so you know I but I think that sometimes that the Bible is used to you know, it, it's man's interpretation of God's word. That, that's what I believe, and it's tainted for personals, for people's personal belief and stuff. And in in fact, you know, I I I don't see in the Bible where it says anything about um, two women. It does say something about you know that men should not lay with men, but you know, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that that's the way it was interpreted back then. God knows what that means back then. You know? Why would God, a supreme, all-knowing being, give us something that's so open to interpretation? It doesn't even mention gay women. And it's just completely... Because God loves lesbians the most. what people are doing with their private parts, you know? It's like, it's so obviously written by bronze age men try to make sense of the world and keep people in their place. And that's got nothing to do with whether there is an actual God or not. You know how I feel about that anyway. Right, right, right. The Bible itself is absolutely full of homophobia and hatred and misogyny. Well, that's what I'm saying, that, that you know, I believe that, you know, everything is, is prone to interpretation. And it's pretty blatant, though. It's, I'm reading the Old Testament at the moment, and it's pretty... Well, here, but here's the thing. I don't read it, and and I've read a good part of the Bible, um, but I'd say I read seventy percent of the Bible. I've not read it in order, you know. Like I've already read um, Genesis, and I'm not quite to Genesis, but anyway, but I've read it. Um, Genesis is the first. Chapter. I mean, not Genesis. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm. I'm sorry. You know, I got to be honest. I took two pain pills because of my back, um, and I did that. I'm a likely story. The first no, because <laughs> you can even. No, it wasn't Vicodin. It's not Vicodin. I don't want to start rumors. But anyway, um, I I didn't mean that. I meant um, shit. I'm really sorry, but. I meant the end where it's supposed to be like the um the Armageddon. Revelations. 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 Exactly, yeah. which to me is a great like horror story. But I read the Bible as 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 a um as a book with a bunch of wonderful stories and some great quotes. You know, not as um God's words. Again, I, I read it as man's interpretation. In the meantime I think that there are some very positive parts of the Bible, but Paula and Debbie had something to say. And then I'll get back to you, Julie, because I can see you biting your teeth there. Yes. Okay. Boy Scouts of America, I just want to say one thing. Shame on you. Okay. Why are you, first of all, they're not only, they're not only, um, not allowing the members, but they're not allowing the leaders. So that's just, that just it sets the, the whole gay um, movement back, and they're supposed to be a um, reconvening in May, right. and this should really outrage the gay community, and they should be going to Washington and marching, because this is going to set them back. It is. Can they tie a knot while they're marching? It is setting them back. Uh, so you I know, listen, I agree, and it's total discrimination. It is discrimination. Go. They should go pitch a tent and tie a couple knots while they're marching, too. It is discrimination, but as Paula said, they're not a protected class. However, there are people in history who have taken them far. But this, this group, the boy, especially the Boy Scouts, because, you know, they teach respect yes. and, and, and right. honor. And, and kindness. Honesty. Kindness. And, yes. Do your best. And if it starts... <laughs> If it starts with the Boy Scouts and if they allow this, what else is going to become of this? What other groups are they going to attack? Who else is going to start standing up and saying, I don't like this group because you're black. I don't like this group because of your, your ethnicity or, or your religion. Okay, this is bad news. And I'm just, um, I'm kind of, 
taken aback why there really hasn't been that much said from the gay community so far. Because we don't want to camp. <laughs> okay, so. Um, okay, okay, Paula, go ahead, Paul. Okay, okay. And let me say, Debbie, you had very good points, and I agree. Shame on them is right. Go ahead, Paula. Right. Now, do they let do they let lesbians into the Girl Scouts? Because I want to be a Girl Scout now. Then, um, and I was never a Girl Scout. Um, I think I was a brownie for a day. I was a brownie for a about a week. Yeah, when I saw the little dress. Yeah, I know, I, bingo. I, I be a Boy Scout, but anyhow. Um, well, do they let lesbians in the Boy Scouts? Yeah, hey, all right, but listen, Lisa, Lisa, this all goes back to the Bible, you know, which is God's word interpreted by man. Um, it was divinely inspired. And this is my answer to the Christians who say Leviticus 18.20, um, man should not sleep with man. Okay, here's the thing. Um, there are so many rules in the Bible that these same hypocrites don't follow, such as you have to go through a cleaning ritual when a man, when a woman has her period before you have sex. And I guarantee these Bible thumping men are not doing so. You can't wear clothes with two different types of, of, uh, of, uh, material. And I guarantee they are. So it's uh, so you can't eat shellfish. Right, as they're dining shrimp and they're telling you you're going to hell. I mean, come on, it's just absolutely ludicrous. First of all, at the time the Bible was written, man should not sleep with man was really in context of Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, sodomy and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was written, it, you have to take the Bible in the spirit and the time it was written. And you know what? I don't think, I don't believe God is a God of judgment. I think he's a God of kindness. And you know what? My God is the same God. My God is the same God. He's the God of the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims. We all have the God of Abraham. But you know what? Can I say that some, some you know, person who's Hindu is wrong? Of course not. We can't, we got to stop playing whose God is better than God, uh, you know, whose God is better and whose God is stronger. It's ridiculous. And, you know, the Christians who love, I don't understand Christian um, homophobia because Jesus was all about brotherly love and peace and never judge. So there are a bunch of hypocrites. And I say, God, please protect me from your followers. Okay, well, um, Julie had her hand up because, I, not that she had her hand up, I cut her off. or so, But Julie had something to say after I went into my whole spiel but certainly had something to say when Paula was saying that our God is a kind of a God of kindness and not and non judgment. Julie almost jumped up. So Julie, go ahead. You got the big screen, Jules. Well, as I said, I'm reading the Old Testament at the moment. It's just what I just said. It's just what you shouldn't do. And you should worship me, and I'm a jealous God, and don't make. I mean, I just like the thing about the golden calf. And God got really upset about that and, and got very jealous. And so Moses slaughtered 2,000 people, even though he'd just been told, Thou shall not kill. It's just, it's just bollocks. And fair enough, I understand that if it's been written by a load of Bronze Age misogynist men who are lost in the desert trying to make sense of the world, make perfect sense. But if you're saying it's been inspired by a perfect, loving, kind being, I just can't see that at all, not at all. Because he's a psychopath, and I would not want that God anywhere near me. Paula has her hand up. I want to say this, and I've said it for a long time. Our very first politics was that Bible. Go ahead, Paula. Well, Julie, you have to understand that the Hebrews, they were wandering in the desert for 40 years when this was written. Now, I'm, I don't eat for a day, and I'm in a really bad mood. So my take is they were really ornery and hungry when they wrote this thing, okay? So you got to give them some slack. <laughs> I don't know that she's joking. They just been told that they shouldn't eat, so maybe that's it. You know? Yeah, I mean, they, look, look, we like, we like corned beef. We like corned beef. We love corned beef. beef. We love you know, corned beef. Look, you know, Shout out to two J's. They were eating... They were eating stuff that was bread that was falling from the sky for 40 years. I mean, come yeah, on. You'd yeah, be pretty yeah. pissed off, too. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> well, um, I, I can't, I, I really can't, in all honesty, um, 
be quiet when we're talking about the Bible because I, I do believe in God. I do believe I, I am a Christian. I do believe in Jesus Christ. I do think, I do think, hang on, let me finish my thought. I do think that uh, with all the great stories of inspiration and, and messages that are positive in the Bible, unfortunately, there are things that I don't agree or that I don't think are true in the Bible and that I think that man has interpreted it when they wrote it and then it's been interpreted over and over and over again in time and been fed, uh, force fed to us where, you know, I, I, I can't say that I, that I co-sign all of that. Um, but I do think that there are some very positive messages and I do think as you read it, Julie, that you certainly will not, um, if you read it as a piece of literature, I think that you would be very impressed with the writing, especially being as old as it is. I'm really not impressed with the writing. I'm a writer, and they suddenly introduce characters from out of nowhere. You know, it doesn't make any sense. The stories are just so badly written. You really but think? It's, it's, yeah, really. It's just so repetitive. But it's going on for about, I don't know, 20 pages about interior design, how they should have the... Um, What's it called? Beginning with T. So, the Torah? Tab no, the tab tab yeah. Tabernacle. Thank you, thank you. It's like, he went on about that, the instructions to Moses about that for ages, and then he repeated it all again, and I was like, oh, we don't want to read this again. They have OCD. The writers have OCD. Why, you know, surely look, God look. should be telling us about it. Listen, all right. Like, so, let me just say, if, okay, I'm if sorry. it was really inspired by a divine being who created the universe, surely it should be telling us how to love each other, how to be kind to each other, and how to stop fucking up the environment, and how to stop murdering people with guns and things like that, because if God knew everything that was going to happen, and he'd know that we were in this state that we're in now, and there would be that information in there, but instead it's just... Oh, and there's nonsense in there about how you can buy and sell your slave and, and that you should sell your daughter if someone rapes her and stuff like that. It's just, it's not, I, I'm very into loving and being kind to people and that has got nothing to do with being kind or loving to people at all. And I understand that then Jesus came along or the story of Jesus came along and made it a bit more accessible, but he still said, I didn't come to change the law or something that came to enforce it. And so all of that other stuff just stands. And I just don't understand how anyone can say that it's a beautiful, loving, kind piece of literature when it's really not. If you read it through the eyes of somebody who doesn't read it. Okay. And and in all fairness, I mean you I see your hand, Paula. But in all fairness, Julie, um you're on Genesis, right? Well, no, I'm, I just finished Exodus. Okay. So I read the whole... She's bashing the Old Testament. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, you know, you got to start it's with bashable. the... Un... It's You know, if the cat fits, then I'm going to... I don't see why it should be protected. I have no investment in it being anything special. Okay, hang on a second. Paula, you had your hand up about something Julie was saying, and I... I... I, you know, first of all, I want to say this right from the start about this show. Julie is entitled to her own opinion. I'm entitled to my own opinion. Paul is entitled to her own opinion. And Debbie's entitled to her own opinion. And it does not at all mean to diminish the opinions or disrespect anybody of any kind of beliefs. Paula, go ahead. Yeah, of course. I mean, look, I, I'm Jewish. I'm not a religious Jew. And you know, I believe in God, but then, you know, on the other side, I mean, on a, if you look at, if you look at science, I was having a conversation with my friend yesterday who was telling me that, I mean, there's got to be a God. How could the universe have come to be? Well, it could have come to be simply by the Big Bang. And, you know, I mean, it's, you have to really have faith to believe in God, but what, but the Bible stories, I mean, come on, you don't really believe that Noah built this humongous ark back in the day and really brought two animals of every species on, on, on a boat? My dog can't even get along with a cat. I, I find that very hard to believe. 
And the Bible has been used to justify killings and... and it was killings. our first and type of politics. All right, but wait a minute, Lisa, let me finish. Okay, the slave owners justified slavery by pointing to a very small passage in the Bible where Noah had some uh, three sons, and his youngest son, whose name was Ham, um, or I'm sorry, Shem, Shem went into his tent and saw his father naked when he was drunk. So they said that because of that, God struck him with a curse of darkness and made him black. So then, really, so and then, and then, and then the Bible goes on to specify that that black people are descendants of, of Shem or of Canaan. It's ridiculous. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. And and then there's a part of the Bible that says that there were giants that walked upon the earth, and, and they've interpreted to mean that 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 that. Uh, Alien giants came and raped the women and created a species of, of supernatural beings. I mean, you know what? The Bible is, is the best piece of fiction. It's better than any horror book. If you want to read Revelations, it'll scare the crap out of you. It do, I, I agree. Revelations. All right, you have to take the Bible in the spirit it was written and not take it literally. Because if you take it literally, then you're a sheep and you're... You're going against God's commandment of free will. If you believe the Bible, sight unseen, then you really aren't, in my opinion, human. You're a sheep that follow, follows a cult leader. Hence the dangers with these religious, I mean, my gosh, you know, the Muslims of today are, are the boogeyman, and it really pisses me off because that's, it's not all Muslims, it's the radical Muslims. But do they not forget the good Christians that are calling them the boogeyman? That during the Crusades, it was the Christians killing everybody off who wasn't Christian? Come on. Ridiculous. I turn it over to Debbie. Debbie. <laughs> Well, I, I agree. I mean, I think the Bible can be interpreted in a lot of ways, and it's to those interpreters who want to um, interpret it. You know, I mean, anybody can read into things and, and turn it into what they want to believe. Exactly. So that's... Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, I, I have, I, you know, real quick, because it, it, it happens to fall on this, well, you know, for the first time in 600 years, a pope is going to resign. And on the Facebook page, I had, you know, first of all, I found it very peculiar when I heard about it. Every, every fiber of my being was like, there's something more to this, you know. And um, so, out of curiosity, I put this bit on the Facebook wall and was like, does anybody have any ideas? And people started... Um, putting in, and some people um, private messaged me because I guess they didn't want their names, and I'm not going to reveal them, but that um, there was a sexual assault that, um, and, and all of it that's coming out with the Catholic Church, and that this man just couldn't handle it, and that actually there was something that involved him from years ago. Anybody hear that? No, but I know that he has been protecting people. That's a fact. And How do you know that? What do you mean, Julie? Well, it, it's a fact that when uh, they were priests who were accused of interfering with children, let's say, and um, the current pope, before he was the pope, would move them just to a different parish, basically, if they were accused. Um, he wouldn't try to... Uh, excommunicate them or, or... No, he tried to keep it real quiet. Yeah, exactly. So protecting people, uh, basically sending them off to do it somewhere else where people would hopefully be quiet. Um, and I, I, I think he's really not a nice person and, and should, people shouldn't be taking any notice of him. He's an old man and he never had sex, but he thinks he knows all about condoms and, you know, he, he should be tried for... Uh, spreading AIDS really among people because he's basically telling people not to use condoms and they're all dying of AIDS. Paula has her hand up. Well, I heard from a very reliable source that the Pope retired because he's gonna he wants to reprise the role of Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he's retiring. Okay. On to Debbie. <laughs> Debbie, do you have anything to say about Pope Benedict? No, I just, 
I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear that. Um, you know, that, that, that was the reason. I mean, I heard they gave excuses like, you know, his age and they don't feel he's really quite up to, you know, Oh, it's not the them. It's, it's, it's him. It's not them. It's all him. You know, so. Bono? Okay. But anyway, um, Debbie, he's the one that's backing down. He, he kind of shocked everybody. So, I mean, they might be supporting him now by this, but certainly there was stuff that was sent to me um, privately. And, um. Well, how does that person know? Well, I mean, articles from other parts of the you, world. The roof. Listen, I, I just want to say this, and maybe this is a shout out. We have viewers not only from Julie's country, but we have viewers from Australia. We have viewers from Italy. I mean, we have people that are, are followers or likables of the show that are from other countries and they get other news and they've sent me like articles on this, you know, where there were things that I didn't know before. So just a shout out to them. Uh, hang news issue if it were, you know, True. Well, you know, I, I've got to say that, you know, um, I don't know if it's something with our country trying to protect this or that, but there, there is, um, there's definitely, like, Julie has gotten, uh, I guess, news of it because you're not really interested in the Pope, Julie, but you certainly have heard about I that. I'm Listen, guys, I, I, I heard, I heard, it's like speculation. Um, are we taping? Yes. Okay, I heard, I heard a rumor uh, that Obama is, has personally called him to ask him to hold off until 2016 because Obama wants to run for Pope. <laughs> Where did you get your information about the Pope, um, with the, um, with the, uh, uh protecting the pedophiles? Where'd you get that information from, Julie, if you don't mind me asking? I'm not sure now. I'll have to verify that. Okay. Now we can have a look now. No, 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 because I, I've got, you know, stuff that was sent to me as well. So we also want, we also wanted to talk um, this week um, about, well, Steve Martin's going to be a dad. at He is a dad at the ripe old age of 67. And I happen, I happen to read it. But I, I saw the thread, and, and it seemed like a lot of people thought that's too old to father a child, and that the kid would probably um, feel ripped off as far as um, having an agile dad to play ball with and, and stuff. Um, so I'm going to start with you this time, Debbie. What's your feeling about, I mean, do you think, do you think there's a limit, uh, an age limit on when somebody can um, can stop, I mean, obviously nature has women stopped at a certain point, but men don't seem to be stopped at that point, obviously. Okay, but we're, we're talking about different aspects now. We're talking about, first of all, is the man going to be healthy enough to to be able to raise his, his child? Okay, now we're talking about... Is he going to be competent enough? And now, now well, we have to ask the question, sh um, should he be, if he, if he is all those things, um, then, then why not? Okay, I mean, some people have a father, like me, for instance, my, bio, my, my, step, my biological father um, left when I was seven years old and he never came back. And he was a young guy. So my answer to that would be no, he sh no. If, if you can't take care of your children, then you shouldn't be a father. On the other hand, there are really perfectly good fathers who are older and who do know how to raise children and who have brought them up right. So it all depends on, on the situation and the, and the person themselves. And, you know, if they're, if they're responsible and if they're, they love their children and they really want to raise them correctly. Um, and let us also say, uh, let us also say that, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to, you know, from one minute to the next and that, you know, a dad who's in his 30s or 40s could, especially in London apparently, or the UK, 
can uh, walk off of um, a sidewalk and get hit by a bus. Because um, I see it in your shows all the time, Julie. Paula had something to um, say. Well, I, can, I can relate to this because my father had me, and I'm the oldest, when he was 45. I didn't like having an older father. I mean, he was, he was a great dad. But, you know, he couldn't, you know, obviously he was older when he had me, so he retired very early. It affected the family. It did. I think that, hey, I wouldn't mind if Steve Martin had me at 80 because when he kicks the bucket, I'd be rich as heck. So I Especially care. you'd be his but, only but, child. You know, look, I'll be honest with you. Right. Amen. But, you know, look, I... You need a, dr a license to drive a car and rent a video, but you didn't, don't need a license to, to knock somebody up and be a daddy or be a mom. And I'll tell you something. I see these young kids, 16, 17, 18, 19, getting women pregnant. They're not ready to be parents. They're kids themselves. And, and you know what? They go out partying with their friends, and they don't know how to, how to really raise a child. They're kids. I mean, especially in this day and age, a 19-year-old is like really equivalent to a 13-year-old in our time. I was going to say know, 12. I mean, even a 25-year-old. I mean, my nephew's 20, 26, and... He's, he's really, you know, like when I was 18 or 17. I mean, he's not, I, I, look, I love the kid, but he's not ready to be a father. I just don't understand. You know, to me, I think that men maybe between 30 and 35 is a good age to be a father. I mean, I think that's the optimum, optimal age. Have a career. You know what? Have a career first and be set before you bring a child into this world. I don't think, like, putting an age, like, I have a wonderful, uh... I'm joking, Lisa, I'm joking with that, but I'm just saying, I don't care what age you are, because some people mature very right. early. I mean, you could be 21, and you could be a CEO of a company. I mean, if you're, if you're set, and you're, you're mature, and fully mature, at 18... And dedicated. Right. The bottom line right. is, you have to be dedicated to your children, but Julie had her, Julie was gonna say something, Julie. I think that... Seven is too old to become a father because even though people are living much longer these days, and as you say, we don't know, I could die tomorrow, we, any of us can die tomorrow, it's not guaranteed that we'll live into our 80s, but there doesn't seem to be an upper age limit of, let's say, 90, really. Um, so, thinking about that child, that child's father will probably die when he or she is about 20, um, which is just really sad, I think. And, and obviously, anyone could die at any time. Of course. Right, right. Um, but just thinking about it from the baby's point of view, I do think that 67 is too old to start having children myself. But I, picking up on what Paula was saying about when is the right age to have a child, um, I'm 35 at the moment and I still don't feel ready. So, I don't know really what the answer is. Well, we had another um, topic this week that was about, and it kind of falls in suit with what Paula was saying, but it was about um, child support and people in the rears, meaning people that owe child support, Julie, um, and them not paying the child support. And... You know, people can have money taken out of their paychecks here for that and have their bank accounts seized for that. And now um, people that are can lose their physical driver's license uh, if, if they're in the rears with child support. And the tax man has now decided they're not going to get their refund and it's going to go to the courts that are going to then give it to the, the ex-spouse for child support. Do you have that in your country? Uh, how, how does that work in your country, Julie? Yeah, we have the Child Support Agency, and so they are quite um, authoritarian, let's say, and, and people have to pay child support to normally the father giving the mother money. That's the traditional way. But the trouble is, if you don't have a job and you don't have any money, how can you support your child? Right. So I, I don't really know what the solution is for that. But yeah, they, they're quite strict on that now, which is good. Right, right.
Um, well, a lot of the topics um, that were brought onto the wall were, uh, and one person in particular, Keith, and I, I like when Keith responds, he, he seems very intelligent and he's outspoken, but he was talking about how um, women that have uh, had their, given their children to, to the husband, or, you know, the ex-husband in a divorce, how, you know, they don't have to, I see your hand up, uh, how they don't have to, uh, they're not accountable for that. And I think in the courts they are, I don't know how serious it is, but I see Debbie has her hand up, so Debbie. Okay, now, my take on this thing is going to be a little different, okay, and I just want to explain myself first. We currently live in a world that wasn't the same as before, where people were married and they got married and lived happily ever after, and they, they you know, the, they basically stayed with each other till the end. Okay, we live in the 21st century now, where currently the divorce rate in America is 50 percent. Absolutely, and growing and growing. Let her talk. We are hang we are on and growing. We're number six in the top in the in the top ten countries uh, with with the divorce rate, and since two thousand and one, it's been nothing but inclining. Okay, so with this mindset, you need to kind of just like you forecast anything else, just like you forecast your bank account, or if you're at your job and you do forecasting, you know what what what's what is to become, and right now what we're looking at is a declining, a merit you know, marriage where people stay married so with that you have to kind of adjust and and what you have to do to adjust is you have to kind of enter marriage like even though you two even though you're in a union with somebody and they're supposed to be your partner you know and you're supposed to grow together and, and build things there is that possibility which is getting bigger and bigger that your your partner is going to leave you so with with that being said, you need to kind of go look, kind of enter a marriage like, okay, well chances are because of the you know all the statistics out there that this person's going to leave me. Now what am I going to do? How am I going to support my kid? And if you cannot figure out a way to do that, unfortunately, that is not a good environment to to be having kids. I'm sorry. Lisa, I'd like to add to that. Go ahead. Okay. You know, Debbie makes an interesting point. Here's my take in the IRS and the tax refund. Amen. And I'm really glad that um, deadbeat fathers are being, you know, having their tax refunds withheld. My sister, her ex, is the biggest slime bag on the planet. When she left him, his, his you know, abusive ass, when she left his abusive ass, he was, he was, um, told he had to pay, I think it was $200 a month child support for two children. He never paid it. My sister never went after him because she was afraid for her safety and, and the safety of my niece and nephew. Now, he never gave a dime. I helped financially support them, and my parents helped. Um, now, here's the thing. Um, later in life, when they became, like, at over 18, all of a sudden he wanted a relationship with them, and they told him basically to fuck off. They call him the sperm donor, okay? I mean, they won't have anything to do with him, nor should they. If a father's not there for you when you need them, why would you have any kind of relationship with them whatsoever? But on the flip side, I have a friend who pointed this out to me, and he's right. 28% of, 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 of men um, default on child support, but 98% of women do. Now, no, usually it's the man... It, it was not the custodial parent. But if the man is the custodial parent, then the woman should pay child support. But what? here's another here's another thing. How do you determine, and this is a big thing because I had a friend many years ago whose ex-husband was a doctor, and she got a lot of child support, and she used most of it on herself. I mean, how do you determine what a fair amount of child support is from the guy? Because I see a lot of guys getting screwed. I mean, I think child support should be child support, not I want to take a vacation with my friends to, you know, bah the Bahamas, and not I want to go buy a Dooney and Burke purse. Okay, child support should only be used on the children. 
And I'll tell you, I helped raise my niece and nephew, so I know how much it costs. There, there, there were two of them. I know how much it costs to, to clothe them and feed them. And, I mean, I, I mean I'm not going to throw out a figure, but I think a lot of women get more than they really need. And I'm not saying all, because some women don't get anything, and some get, get women get too little. But Debbie makes an interesting point. She's right. In this day and age, with divorce being so prevalent, I think when you go into a marriage and, you know, barring a man that cheats on you and leaves you, you know, high and dry, but if you go into a marriage and you're seeing red flags in the beginning, don't have children. Don't have children because what happens is, look, I pay taxes as we all do. Why should my tax money to go to somebody to raise their kids? I mean, my taxes go to public schools. I don't have kids that go to public school. I don't have a problem with, with, you know, giving money to help out somebody that needs it. But our tax money goes to a lot of women or men that can't afford to raise their children. And it's not fair to the rest of us. I think before you have it, to me, having a child is the biggest decision anybody can make. And too many people just have it because they just want to have kids or whatever. Man, if you're in a bad marriage or, or I mean, and this goes for gay people too. If you see red flags, don't have kids. Okay. Sorry. Okay, well, listen, I, I agree. You shouldn't be bringing um, children into, uh, in, into um, a toxic environment. And a lot of people think that, well, you know, I thought it would change him, or you know, it 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 you know. Listen, people are people, and very rarely um, do they change. You know, like a leopard doesn't uh, change its spots. But I also think that you know there are women that you know sometimes kids live fifty 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 percent with the mom. You know, and, and in the meantime, the women are still getting child support. Some people, I agree, Paula, look at it as an extra uh, paycheck, and it's I mean, not. So let me ask you this, Lisa. I mean, I don't think, Jill, you don't have kids, do you? Sorry. Yeah, so none of us... She doesn't want kids. Right, I'm sorry. You don't have to... All right. How much, I mean, okay, I had a friend, I'm telling you, the one that, the one that was married to the doctor, she got, she had two kids, she got $3,000 a month. I think that's exorbitant. I mean, how much do you think a month a woman should get if she's the custodial parent? Well, here's the thing. You, you'd you have to go into, you know, were the kids in private school? Um, how much was the private school? And you yeah. also... And you also all of her kids were in private. Her kids were in... Her two kids were in private school. Okay. I say she had three kids or two kids. And, oh, I'm sorry, her three, her three, but one wasn't his kid. One was uh, from a previous marriage. Okay, so, you know, and the kids shouldn't have to be uprooting into a different school or um, a school that the parents think is less than when somebody gets a divorce. But the thing is, is that I don't know if there was the alimony thrown in there. But, I mean, private school is very expensive, so right. I think all of that gets weighed in. But, yeah, I, but I mean, the kid, absolutely, Lisa, I think the kids should be able to keep their life as they were when they were, ma you know, they, they were, you know, had both parents. But I'm telling you, this woman was in Paris and she was traveling to Greece and Italy. And she even joked, gosh, I got to do this all now until the child support stops. Right. I mean, come on. And there are people that live with um with others, with other partners and don't get married so that they can avoid losing whatever right. support that um they're getting oh, yeah she wouldn't wait debbie tell the story tell the yeah. story deb okay <laughs> maybe my microphone works a little too well okay <laughs> we don't know who it's about though <laughs> tell them um no what, what i was gonna say polly just made me lose my train of thought but um you can't really punish a, a certain a, you know a particular number of people because there are people who really 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 do need that child support of course you know of course at debbie of course that's not what i'm saying i'm just talking about the people that the, are perpetrating like, a crime that friend that got three thousand a month and was going to italy right i mean i i do i do have a friend actually um and she married this guy and you know, she didn't even want to live in the same house with him, which somehow she, she got to keep her house, but, you know, he lived in his separate house, okay, and he was, he was very well off, but she was able to collect alimony and child support, 
Okay, and she would even, and she wasn't even with him a year. Like she just married him basically just to get that. I, I mean, believe it. Was it. So you know, people like that. Yes, I, I can say you know they, they don't deserve it. But again, there are you know there are really women who really need that, and that was my point. If you you know if you don't feel like you can raise your child on your own, then you know you should just maybe rethink that. You know, for for your benefit and for your unborn child. Mm-hmm. You know. Right, right. Unfortunately, obviously, people don't think like that. Right. You know. They don't. I know. And um, so yeah, I feel you with that. But it, it, you know, I think it is about time that the deadbeat dads are, are and deadbeat moms, are um starting to, to be held accountable for um their children, as opposed to having other people um take care of them. You know. Right. I agree. Amen for that. About so. time. Anyway, um, I got to tell you, I think that pretty much covers what we were supposed to cover this week. Anyway, so uh, that covers this week's informants. And um, next week, uh, Julie from the UK will not be on the show. I think uh, Deborah Covington's coming back. Uh, Julie will be back the following week. And I don't know what's up with my Aunt Tina. Uh, I, I know that she's moving and she's dealing with some things which, you know, it's not my place to say, but, um, and, uh, Jenny, uh, Reed, we expect back, uh, within a month's period of time, hopefully. Um, so we just want to say goodbye until next week on The Informants. Bye.